Hey there, my name is Nick Fuller. I'm a husband, dog dad, startup junkie, and part-time real estate agent here in the Metro Atlanta area. I wanted to make this video and give you a little background on me and my professional career, where I got my start, kind of where I'm looking to take things. I always find it interesting learning about other people's backgrounds and kind of their career path where they uh, kind of were able to take that themselves. So, um, today's video I, I just want to kind of lay the groundwork, kind of talk a little bit about my education, where I got my start, uh, what I'm doing today, and what I'm planning to do here in the future. If you're interested, stay tuned and give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, tell me what more you want to hear about. Jumping into it, I went to school here in Metro Atlanta, uh, school in, in downtown. Uh, studied computer information systems. Really, that was my way of blending business and, and technology. It's a, a good program, but it, it kind of gave me a, a good foundation of what it's like to work in corporate IT, if you will. Um, so with that, that's a, a four-year degree. Was able to, in college, have a, an internship with a company called Georgia Pacific. Georgia Pacific is a big manufacturing company. They make cardboard boxes or, or corrugated boxes. They make paper towels, toilet paper. Uh, you've probably seen them all throughout the pandemic advertising. So I, I was able to intern with them for two and a half years, uh, kind of part-time year round. So I interned in their CTO group. Um, this was probably starting sophomore year summer going into junior year uh, fall is when I started and it was it was a great experience really enjoyed that uh, I got to do a lot of research um, with the senior manager I worked under got to do a, a few fun side projects working in Google SketchUp and uh, kind of planning out some facilities for them for their innovation centers after a year or so of that, I transitioned into their packaging IT team. Um, got a little stir crazy and had a cool opportunity to work under um, a really great manager there. And my role was to uh, take an internal program that they've built and uh, see how it can benefit their packaging plants. And essentially being able to figure out um, of all the SKUs that they are cutting out of the packaging material, what's the best way to fit those together to really get the most use out of, out of all the paper, um, so not wasting paper essentially. So you take a bunch of SKUs and sizes and feed it into this program, um, be able to take the exported results of that, do some analysis on it and print it, present it back to the packaging plant um, to get their thoughts and see if we can improve, reduce waste for uh, the plane itself. So I was able to do that, that was really fun. Had a few other projects on that team. I uh, really thought I was gonna get a full-time offer. Uh, didn't really plan to, to work anywhere else. Um, so senior year, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, uh, she went to a career fair and, and got an awesome job offer from one of the big four accounting firms that fall. And I was like, oh man, I really need to apply for a job now. <laughs> so I went online and kind of through living in downtown, I saw Accenture's logo um, in the downtown area and was like, you know what, why not apply? I don't really know what they do. I think it's consulting, but I'll just throw my resume out there. And this was uh, spring of 2009. Uh, Somehow I, I got through the noise. They didn't typically recruit at the school I went to. Uh, went through the interview process, flew out to Houston for the final interviews there, uh, and got placed in the infrastructure group. Had a really great offer, kind of mid-60s uh, salary, and was off to the races. Um, my actual start date was in September of 2009, so I had a nice uh, long summer. Continued interning at GP. They knew I was taking a full-time role and they allowed me to, to stay on and, and see it through the summer. So that was really awesome. When I joined Accenture, I joined in their infrastructure group and honestly, I'm not totally sure what it is today still. I think they've merged that into their kind of journey to cloud practice. 
Uh, but at that time, that group was really focused on ITIL and IT service management frameworks. Um, there wasn't a, a, a huge uh, kind of a huge group of projects to just get immediately staffed on. Uh, so I spent probably the first two weeks on the bench just applying to a bunch of projects and somehow got picked up on a project out in Provo, Utah. That was actually a Salesforce implementation, totally unrelated to the group that I, that I was in. Uh, but, you know, I, I got a call from a senior manager on a, it was probably a, a Monday. He asked if I could be there on Tuesday. I said, I don't know, can I? I, I don't know how any of this works. Uh, and I said, let me talk to my career counselor. And he said, yeah, go for it. So Tuesday night, I jumped on a plane and was there Wednesday through the weekend. Uh, my, my dad lived out there, so it was a free trip and ended up staying on that project for just about a year. Uh, Monday through Thursday, we were rolling out a brand new Salesforce implementation for call center, for, um, for their overall kind of whole company uh, as a big CIO initiative and got to kind of grow within that role really quickly from just kind of doing config work to running my own work stream there. And that was an amazing project, my, my favorite project of all at Accenture of my three and a half years there. I just had a lot of freedom to kind of do what made sense and, and deliver for the project. Uh, from there, I kind of bounced around to a few accounts. Some here in Atlanta, I spent three months in Miami and really ended my time uh, at Accenture here at a local hospital doing a, a ServiceNow implementation and rolling that out. And that was great, really easy commute. Uh, once we had our initial go live, it was a pretty kind of uh, maintenance type of project. So that was, a, uh, that was fun while it lasted and um, really didn't see a whole lot of progression um, within that role. Essentially how those companies work is uh, the more senior you become, the more you need to specialize. And the group I was in really wants you to specialize in IT service management and ITIL ticketing frameworks. And to be honest, that did not interest me at all. Uh, so from there, I started looking around. I uh, interviewed at Uber Eats in, in that spring of, uh, what was it, probably 2016. Got to final round, didn't get an offer. And I'd just been throwing my resume out there. I'd always wanted to be more entrepreneurial and, and work in a startup environment. So um, with that, I uh, so with that, I uh, so with that, that really steered me and where I was applying. I uh, didn't really apply to any other consulting firms. I knew that's not really what I wanted to do there. So I applied at a lot of startups and growing companies um, and ran across uh, a company that someone I went to high school with had started and, and reached out, applied. Didn't hear back from them. I applied for a business analyst role. I wanted to get out of consulting and, and more into where, in my mind, where you know, business decisions were, be, were being made there. So didn't hear back from them. And then that winter over kind of Christmas break, I, what I did is I wanted to meet with, with friends and, and friends from high school and people in their careers and just learn about what else is out there. So I actually uh, set up a Calendly link and put it on my Facebook and said, hey, I'd love to have breakfast, lunch, or dinner with you. Uh, if you're interested, just book some time with me and uh, I'll, buy, I'll buy the meal. I ended up having probably eight meals, um, drinks, you know, mixtures of, of whatever, uh, with uh, old friends, friends from high school, people I kind of knew who wanted to connect. And honestly, it was a fantastic experience. Would definitely recommend if you have some time this, this winter and want to just see what else is out there is just put it out to your your network and see if anyone is willing to you know right now jump on a teams or a skype call or uh, a webex zoom to to hang out and, and just catch up real quickly um, from that 
I reached out to the CEO of, of that company that I didn't hear back from, the guy who went to my high school, and said, hey, I'd love to get coffee or lunch. And he said, yeah, sure, come on down, come to the office, we'll, we'll connect. And so I drove to the office uh, expecting to, to have lunch, ended up walking around the office, talking to a few of the employees at the time, I think there were probably 40, 50 people at the company. And from there, I uh, ended up doing a logic puzzle. I ended up doing a coding puzzle. It turned into a full-blown interview, and I walked out with uh, an offer on a back of a piece of paper with kind of the salary we negotiated. Uh, I called my wife in the car, and I said, I think I just got a job offer, and I think I'm gonna take it. Um, so, went back home. Uh, talked about it, talked it through, uh, was really encouraged by the leadership that was helping support the company and, and kind of the, the growth of that they're experiencing. So it was probably on the 2nd of January of 2017, right after New Year's, I, I texted my career counselor at Accenture and I said, hey, are you, are you free to chat? And we got on a phone call and the first thing he said to me was, so where are you going? Uh, <laughs> So he obviously knew I was I was leaving, and um, he was super supportive. Uh, really encouraged me to to explore that opportunity, and I, I took that opportunity. Uh, I, I put in my notice uh, probably three days later, and joined um, the current company I'm with. Uh, middle of January 2017, so it's almost been been four years now. Uh, so I joined that as an implementation consultant. Uh, which is kind of funny, I was trying to leave consulting, but what was really exciting about it is being able to you know, figure out how the product needs to be implemented, learning the industry, and uh, just learning how to take care of customers uh, that need help in a fast growing industry. So I've been able to take that experience and um, as the company grew, grow my career there. So started as an individual, contribu individual contributor, moved into a uh, lead role where I managed a team of 12 for about uh, two years. That then grew into a team of 40, uh, downsized a little bit with some of the corona impacts, um, and, and did that for about three, three and a half years and, and really enjoyed the experience. Um, got to be on the road a lot. Uh, in 2019, I was on the road probably 50% of the time. Uh, bouncing around, helping customers, kicking them off, solving problems, which was really, really rewarding. Uh, and at a certain point, wanted to make a little more uh, progression within my career, get out of just the consulting world, and again, move into more of an entrepreneurial space. And after enough pestering and honestly being a pain in the butt, um, got an opportunity to move into what we call an offering analyst which is kind of a mini CEO for a product, uh, thinking about the sales, marketing, implementation, R&D strategy, and taking a new product to market. So that's what I've been working on the past four months now. Uh, past three months, I have no clue what I was doing. Uh, thankfully, a very patient team and supportive that's, that's coaching me through this, a great mentor uh, in the team, helping me through, through this process. Um, really the past month, I've really found my footing, uh, mostly focusing on sales and honestly convincing the sales teams to go out and, and sell the product and take it to market and leading all the demos, learning what customers are talking about, learning the strategy, what works, what makes sense, what do we need to build next uh, throughout the product here. So it, it's been a, been a lot of fun uh, figuring that out. Uh, and then in kind of backing up a little bit in, in April, there was a bit of a lull. Uh, <laughs> in my work, so my quarantine hobby was to become a part-time real estate agent. So I found online an app and kind of learned the process of what it takes to uh, achieve your license. So I, I studied for the, the exam starting in mid-April, uh, passed the pre-exam before you can actually get licensed at the end of May, and then passed my uh, Georgia real estate license exam on I want to say July 2nd, uh, out in Savannah. That was the earliest we could do, so we did a long weekend in Savannah. And uh, have been able to do three deals since then um, in the last half of 2020. 
have been putting together a plan for 2021. What does that look like? What are my goals there? So what I'll do in another video is talk about how I structured my real estate business, uh, what tools I use, how I picked a broker and, and just talking about that process. I always think that's interesting. Uh, and then talking about, um, you know, whatever, whatever makes sense here. So in general, um, yeah. So once, so we're here today, um, it's December, 2020, uh, would love to make more of these videos and kind of build my more online presence here. I'll mostly talk about business, technology, entrepreneurship, and probably a little Tesla thrown in. We, we have a Model Y and uh, you get a lot of views for that. So we'll probably talk about the Tesla there. So uh, hopefully that was interesting to you. Um, would love to hear about your journey. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and, and happy to, to talk business anytime. If there's anything in particular you wanna learn about, anything I can dive deeper in, you know, let me know. Uh, use those comments, hit the like button, subscribe. <laughs> it's funny to talk like that. And uh, yeah, I'll be posting more regularly and, and looking forward to it. All right, thanks guys, see you later.